Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today we're taking a look at a Finder S2 series thermal imaging camera that plugs into your cell phone by HSF Tools. Now one of the good things about this one, it has no internal battery. You just plug it in and it instantly works. So there's no problem with that. It's a very small, very durable device that you can carry with you everywhere you go, basically, and have a thermal imaging system right there in your pocket, and it just plugs into your cell phone and you're instantly in business. So this case is pretty cool. Um, nice and soft. It has the divider here to keep things from touching uh, the actual camera lens. And then you have this little extra pocket to put some stuff. And it has a little extension here. So if you have a phone case or something like that, you can extend the USB-C uh, into that if you need to. But generally, you just need this. And this feels really solid. Feels really, has a little, little bit of a... Um, like a little bit of weight to it. It feels really, really tough. The surface feels like a, uh, I don't know, it's not like rubberized, but it's definitely a tough, hard plastic. It feels durable, like you can drop it and stuff like that, and probably won't be a problem the way it looks and feels. The instruction manual is fairly well done, not overly complex. Shows you how to you get the app here. And you get it from the Play Store. And it shows you all the different settings here and features. So once we install the app, it's going to show this screen here. And you can, it has the thermal imager. It just says to just plug it in. And once we plug it in like so, it'll pop up here. All right. You can say... Set it up there, so now it's giving us the thermal imaging here. So here's the app, and right now I have the, uh, you can see the thermal imaging with my cup right here, and my hand, you can see my fingerprints there, it's very sensitive. And right now you'll see these little, these little crosshairs, and there's a blue one, there's a red one, and then there's one in the very center. And basically what I'm doing is I have the measurement here. You can see these different options. Uh, you can see other options here on the left side. You can see right now the max, min, and center temperatures. Uh, you can also see a gradient line right here showing you what the, the colors mean. Now uh, it has a cool feature. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, you can take pictures or video here. And then you can sh look at the pictures that you've taken here. It also save in your gallery on your phone as well. Uh, so right now, um, the measurement. So we have the center uh, highlighted in green, the hot highlighted in green, the cold highlighted in green. And I can turn those features off just by toggling them all on, on or off. Uh, I can also, let's go ahead and toggle those off because we can also do single points. And then let's say we just choose that right there and it gives us that temperature. Or we can choose over here and give us that temperature at that one spot. We can toggle that off. We can add another another one over here. So we can add more and more and more. Uh, we can also have a line. And so it'll give us the high and low on that line as well as an average on that line. Uh, we can also have a rectangle and everything within that rectangle will give us a high and a low and an average within that rectangle. We can clear everything by hitting this little trash can right here, and it clears it all out. Uh, so yeah, let's say there's a wire that you want to, there's a specific spot on a wire, you can use that line. The rectangle can just more focus on a, on a, a small piece or a small part of this overall image, and then you can have a single point, uh, which can be useful. And then of course, if you just want it to automatically find the hot and the cold, uh, you can have those turn on. And that's the measurement icon here. The different palettes uh, has quite a few, even a custom one here. So the custom one, you can choose the low and the high, and then you can confirm what colors you want for your low and the high, and then it shows that gradient. Um, but the ones that it has is white hot, 
Black Hot. This one's called Fusion One. Rainbow. Regular Fusion. Iron Bow One. Iron Bow Two. Sepia Colors. Color One. Color Two. Ice Fire. Rain. Red Hot. Green Hot and dark blue. Now these different colors are not just for, just to look cool. Uh, they also give you, depending on the circumstance and the, depending on the resolution of the, uh, the temperature differences, if it's just a very small temperature difference, uh, then you might need to, you know, choose a different color, you know, maybe for your eyes or just for the, whatever it is you're looking at, it can help to have different colors, you know, showing you the difference in um you know visually you know and that comes in handy at uh, certain times uh you can also go here to the image and you can adjust the contrast the brightness and the uh color distribution as well you have histogram and then you have linear linear all right so let's go to color distribution and let's go to linear and then we'll go to color distribution and go back to histogram. And the brightness, contrast, sharpness is pretty self-explanatory there. Uh, accuracy, you can have the emissivity, which is the reflectivity. You notice this box is reflecting some light from this coffee cup. Or it's not actually light, it's reflecting heat. Uh, so, so I'll put my hand here, you can see the reflectivity of this box. And it's just a cardboard box. And it's not very glossy, so you know. Even so, a, a piece of glass or a piece of metal will reflect heat, and the emissivity uh, you can adjust that out uh, depending on the surface that you're trying to get a temperature from. Uh, so it has these little examples here. All right, and also the distance. Now the distance would be mostly for um, the parallax between, I'll show you in a second, the regular camera and the, um, what you're measuring, but, um, but also, you know, the distance also helps out with the, the accuracy of the temperature as well, because it's close, the, the, the further it is, you know, the less heat it can detect basically. And then you have different parameters here. You have a temperature range. Which you like right now, everything's under 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, the second level, which would be 212 up to 752 degrees Fahrenheit. So, if you're only measuring larger uh, temperatures, or if you need to let measure larger temperatures, you need to change that uh, temper temperature range. Otherwise, it's not going to show up the high temperatures. Also, under parameters is where you can change the unit. So, let's say you want Celsius. It originally came in Celsius, and I'd change it to Fahrenheit, but you can also have Kelvin if you want. You also have a temperature alarm, uh, which you can choose high or low alarm temperature. So in the event that you want a to be like have an audible alert, if there's something on the screen that is either higher or lower than these temperatures, uh, so you can have that alarm there. Uh, now these up here, you can rotate the image 90 degrees. Any orientation that you want, that you need. You can recalibrate. You notice it'll sometimes freezing recalibrate. I have the automatic recalibration turned on. You can turn that off, which is pretty cool. So that way, if you start recording, you don't want any kind of stutters or anything, uh, you can turn brief, you know, temporarily or whatever, the auto calibration off. But, and then you can also recalibrate right before you hit record, that kind of thing. Uh, there's also the super resolution, which you can turn on or off, which is a little bit more detail. And then this one right here is a, uh, this is a picture in picture. So if we hit that, it gives us a view of both the visible camera here and the actual uh, thermal imaging. But you notice they're not perfectly lined up, but it does give you some context here on that little picture in picture. It can be useful at certain times, especially if you were to uh, record and you need to refer back to it and then you don't have the context of your eyes looking at whatever you're aiming it at, uh, you can have that picture-in-picture. Picture. That's, that's handy. 
Now, you notice these little A's right here, and it has this little gradient bar there showing you what the temperatures mean uh, in relationship. So you have the high and low, and then everything in between here. Uh, but let's say you wanted to only have, you wanted to have higher temperatures pop out. And um, uh, so what you can do is you can choose high or low here. Uh, so let's go to the low, and we can go ahead and raise the low temperature. Um, so let's go ahead and grab a hold of it. There we go. And, and let's say we want to have anything over 72 degrees pop out, and everything else will be just like a, a, a black and white gradient. Uh, we, can, we can raise or lower this temperature, and we can go much higher if we want. So any, you can notice the coffee is the only thing now in my hand. Everything else is a gray, and it's popping out that one color. So there's times in which we, if we want to have uh, just that certain temperature range, we can have that. Same thing with the top part. Uh, we can lower this down. So there's only, uh, let me get it, there we go. Bring it down to where only things that are lower than that temperature will pop out. And then the higher temperatures will be blended in. It'll be basically a white hot, black and white gradient, basically. But yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. I thought that was interesting. And this is Let's say you're looking for an animal in the woods, right? Well, you just bring it up to where it'll be, you know, you know, over 70, 80 degrees or whatever, and then every then the animal will pop out because it'll be warmer than everything else in the background. Uh, that kind of use, you know, or you know, mechanically or whatever. You can use it in different ways, but uh, it's a pretty cool feature making the uh, the temperatures pop out from the background. So you can see that there is a pretty smooth motion. Here on the screen, there's a slight delay, but it's still pretty smooth. You can see just a slight delay, uh, but the smoothness of the footage looks pretty good. Uh, some cameras are, you know, very choppy. Some thermal imaging are very choppy. The the re the refresh rate or the um, yeah the the refresh rate on the image is very very choppy. This one's not pretty smooth. It just has that slight slight delay, not much. Here's some sample images here. See, has the uh, the date, the emissivity, the high and low gradient, uh, and the time and date and everything. Some of the practical uses for this device in the automotive world uh, would be checking your tires to see if there's any uneven wear after a drive. You can see if one side is hotter than the other. You may indicate some uneven wear. Also, you can look at your brake rotors if they're exposed to the, the wheels and see if there's any cracks or if there's any one that's hotter than the other ones or if there's any hot spots or anything like that. You can also look at your engine to see if all the cylinders are firing properly, if there's any leaks, if there's any, any hot liquids dripping, you'll be able to see that, uh, stuff like that. You can also check out your heated seats, heated steering wheel, make sure the heating elements are all working, they're symmetrical and all that stuff. Uh, you can also use it in your house to make sure that, that there's any, see if there's any insulation leaks or if there's any kind of wiring hot spots, any breakers that are heating up, you know, too much or something like that. Just visually looking at things uh, with a thermal camera can really solve a lot of problems. There could be wet spots on the carpet, this water seeping underneath somewhere. Uh, there could be, um, that's another thing you can check in vehicles, if there's any kind of leak the water gets underneath the carpet and you might not see it or feel it, uh, but the thermal imaging should be able to see that there's a coldish spot there on the floor. Uh, so there's lots of different op uh, uses for thermal imaging. It's very sensitive and you can see if there's any little tiny temperature differences that could indicate a problem or, or anything. So yeah, it's, it's very useful to have on hand a thermal imaging device like the Finder S2. <laughs> They said I couldn't see, but now I hold the power of heat vision. Plug it in, no charge, no weight. See the heat destroy your face. Super resolution, crank it high. Thermal power.